All right, everyone, we are going to be working on section two from chapter three today. We are going to be continuing talking about lines and transversals, but specifically today we're talking about parallel lines. So you'll notice everything today will have um, two lines that are marked with these two little arrows. As we discussed before, those two arrows mean parallel. So every single problem today must be parallel or it will not work. So double check that first before you even try any problem. All right, so we have four theorems we're going to go over today. The first one is the corresponding angles theorem. The corresponding angles theorem, of course, is referring to corresponding angles. Remember, corresponding are the ones where we have one on the interior, one on the exterior, but on the same side of the transversal. So the corresponding angles theorem says if you have two parallel lines right here that are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles, angles one and six, are congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle six. So anytime you see a pair of congruent, or I'm sorry, a pair of corresponding angles, you can automatically now assume they are congruent if the lines are parallel. So we can mark them using our little arcs there. All right, so let's use that idea to answer our first example. It says find the measure of all of the missing angles. Okay, well we just learned about corresponding angles, so can you locate an angle that is corresponding with the 120. So hopefully you're thinking angle four. Angle four was uh, corresponding and the lines are parallel, you see. And so we know these angles are congruent. So this must be 120 degrees. All right, if we go back to the original 120 angle here, would you agree that angle five is vertical to angle 120? That means that if they're vertical, they are also congruent. But also think about if angle five is 120 and angle five is corresponding with angle one, it's also 120, right? Okay, so we filled in a whole bunch of these angles that are 120. The remaining angles are not 120, they are different. And so I want to remind us back to last chapter when we talked about a linear pair. Remember a linear pair is when you have a straight line um, that's cut by a line. And so you've got two angles on each side of that line. So for example, maybe we look right here at this line and we see that we have this larger angle right here. We know that that is 180 degrees. So if the right angle is 120, then obviously the left angle would be 60 degrees, right? If we subtract from 180. Well, if angle seven is 60 and then angle three, that is corresponding with seven, right, would also be 60 degrees. All right, but if angle three is 60, angle two must also be 60 because they're vertical. And if angle two is 60, then angle six must be 60 because angle two and angle six are corresponding. So moral of the story, if you have one pair of corresponding angles, you can figure out the rest of them, right? Okay, so we've got three more theorems. I'm gonna just go over them real quickly. Uh, the first one is the alternate interior angles theorem. Essentially what it says is if you have parallel lines that have alternate interior angles, they are congruent. So let's write that down. Angle one is congruent to angle five because they are on alternating sides of the transversal. They are both interior of the two parallel lines. All right, next one is alternate exterior. It essentially says the exact same thing. It says that if they are alternate exterior and it has parallel lines, then they are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle eight. This last one, I'll just tell you now, the last one is the one everyone messes up, okay? This is the hardest one because it's the one that's different, okay? So this one says consecutive interior angles are supplementary, meaning they equal 180. So in your notes, make sure that you highlight this word supplementary because this is the only pair of angles that are supplementary from this list of theorems. One thing that I like to do on my diagram for this one is I like to circle this, uh, the consecutive interior angles because it's the only pair using these relationships that I can circle without crossing over any of the lines. So on here, I always circle those angles because that reminds me, oh yeah, these are grouped together and they equal 180 degrees. They are not congruent. A lot of people wanna set them congruent. All right, so that's essentially all of the lesson. We're just gonna do a few examples now. 
All right, so starting with the first one here, it says find the value of x. All right, well, if you look at the 115 and the uh, one that has the x with it, these don't have anything in common. They are not alternate interior, alternate exterior, any of those relationships. So before we get started on that, I would like to mark this angle right here as 115. Now, how did I know that these angles were congruent? Well, they are vertical, right? So since they're vertical, I know that they're congruent. All right, um, also take notice we have parallel lines, which is awesome because if we have parallel lines, we can use all those theorems we were just looking at. So if you look right here, I can circle these, which tells me they are consecutive and interior. And if they're consecutive interior, remember that's the weird one, right? Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. They equal 180 total degrees. So I need to take the 115 and I need to add that to the x plus 5. And the total should be 180 since they are consecutive interior and supplementary. All right, if I collect my like terms, I have 120. If I subtract 120 to the other side, I get x equals 60. All right, so remember x equals 60, that is not the degree of the angle. So if they do ask you for the angle, make sure that you put, put the 60 back in here. So that would be 65 total degrees. So just kind of pay attention to what they asked for. This time they said find the value of x, so of course that is 60. All right, we have a couple more examples that we're gonna do. Um, if you would like, um, well, I would like if you would try these two examples on your own, and then once you're done with these two examples on your own, then go ahead and press uh, play and watch and see if you got them right. So I'd love for you to pause the video now and work on these two examples on your own. Okay, so on the first one, I'm hoping that you notice that these two angles, 2x and 120, do not have a relationship between them. Um, they are not uh, alternate interior, alternate exterior, anything like that. So we need to somehow manipulate this so that we have one of the um, theorems that we were looking at. So I'm gonna put 120 right here as well using the uh, vertical angles theorem. And then I notice that I have right here a pair of consecutive interior. So those equal 180, right? And so I'm gonna set up 2x plus 120 equals 180. And if I subtract 120 to the other side, I get 60. And if I divide by two, I get x equals 30. All right, last one for today. Um, on this one, notice that these two angles, they do have a relationship. Those are called alternate in uh, exterior, sorry. And remember, alternate exterior is when they're on alternating sides of the transversal, but they are both outside or exterior of the parallel lines. Alternate exterior angles are congruent, so we are gonna set them equal to each other. So we have six y minus three equals 129. If I add three to the other side, I get 132. If I divide by six, I get two, two, 22. All right, guys, that is it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, don't forget to check on Canvas and make sure that you have the assignment ready to go when it is due. All right, see you soon.